Hi friends, welcome to another lesson with Miss G. Um, today is going to be interesting because we're going to look over our book, right? The Why Mosquitoes Buzz in People's Ears. We're going to look at some of the words and we're also going to look at some of the characters. Okay, so let's just get right into it. And just like that same question we said it many times. What does a deeper exploration of the words and illustrations reveal about the unknown words and why mosquitoes buzz in people's ears? Again, lots of words, big words, but basically we're going to look at the book, look at the pictures, and figure out these words that we might not know. So, in this storybook, is this a storybook or an informational text? And what makes you say that? So think about our book and think about our story. And remember, storybooks are fictional. They're not real. Informational text is real. So what do you guys think this is? Answer at home, and I'll ask my friends here. It's a storybook because it's not real. I think it's a storybook because it has animals talking. So, my friends, it's not uh, an informational text. It is a storybook. It's specifically something called a folk tale. And this video tells us a little about Today a folk tale. We'll learn what is a folk tale. A folk tale is a fictional story that has been passed down from person to person for many years. Sometimes there are many different versions of a folk tale. So, friends, just like it said here, folk tales have three parts. Animals that act like people, a lesson or a moral, a problem that is solved in the end. So, this is a folk tale, right? Because they have animals talking like people, and we learn something from it, and they solve something from it. So, we are looking for the unknown words in our story. And who can help me out with this? Un. What do you think that means? That un part in unknown. It means the opposite of the word in front of it. Right. So not that something you know, it's something unknown. You don't know it. Another example is unsafe. Something that's not safe unfair something that's not fair unreal something that's not real so we are looking for the words in our story that we don't know okay and once we go through it miss g wants you thinking about how could i know it if i don't know the word the iguana was still grumbling to himself when he happened to pass a python the big snake raised his head and said, Good morning, Iguana. The Iguana did not answer, but lumbered on, bobbing his head, badamin, badamin. Now why won't he speak to me, said the python to himself. Iguana must be angry about something. I'm afraid he is plotting some mischief against me. He began looking for somewhere to hide. So, that word, mischief, hmm, um, in the text it said, Iguana must be angry about something. I'm afraid he's plotting some mischief against me. Hmm, I'm not sure what the word means. Let me go back to the text to see if there are any clues in the story to help me. Well, it says the Iguana was plotting something. 
And I know plotting usually means planning something bad. So that gives me a clue that mischief is something that might be bad. It also said that Python was afraid of the mischief Iguana was planning. So he hid in the rabbit's hole. That tells me that mischief is probably something bad that someone might be afraid of. Maybe mischief is like a trap or a trick. So my friends, we can tell from the letters, the words, what mischief might mean. And look at the picture. How could the picture help you understand what mischief means? The python is trying to get away from the iguana. Mm -hmm. The python is looking back at the iguana with a worried look. So the python moves down the rabbit hole and he's worried, right? So we can understand that mischief might mean that this guy, the iguana, is planning something like a trap for the snake. So even though Miss G didn't know the word, or maybe friends at home didn't know the word, I can look all around at the other words, at the picture, to figure out what that word means. And we actually learned this, friends, um, as a reading technique. If you remember with Miss Shema, we did guided reading. And for some of my friends, of course, um, we did guided reading. And then we were able to look around and at the pictures to figure out the word. See, you can see his mischievous face. <laughs> I mean, his worried look. At last, King Lion called a meeting of the animals. They came and sat down, kim, 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 around a council, uh, council fire. Mother Owl did not come, so the antelope went to, uh, was sent to fetch her. When she arrived, King Lion asked, Okay, so friends, fetch. I hope we are doing the same thing we did last time. We're going to look at the words and pictures to figure out what that word fetch means. At home, I want you trying to figure it out. And I'm going to ask my friends here. The clue from the story is that Mother Owl wasn't there. So they had to go get her or fetch her. Exactly. So fetch is just another word of saying going to get them. The king lion called the rabbit. The timid little creature stood before him, one trembling paw drawn up uncertainly. So, another word that you might know, or might not know, timid. What could it mean? I heard it say the rabbit was trembling. That's a clue that timid might mean scared. I know because you might tremble if you're scared. Exactly. The rabbit looks shy. She's trying to hide behind her paws. So timid is a way of saying scared or shy. So now that we did that, friends, how have you used the illustrations or the pictures to help you understand and enjoy why mosquitoes buzz in people's ears? I use them to figure out what fetch means. Yep. I use them to understand words in the story. The illustrations help show what is happening. The illustrations are beautiful to look at. They help me know what the animals look like. How do the illustrations or pictures in our story help you understand or imagine what a forest in Africa would look like? What helps you understand what it might be like there? I can imagine what the animals look like. The pictures help me imagine the trees. The colors help me feel like I'm there. The pictures look like they're from a different place. Beautiful. So now friends, what we're going to do is collect evidence for our evidence organizer. Why mosquitoes buzz in people's ear? We have our different characters in our story. I know there's more character friends, but we're only gonna talk about these. The iguana, the python, 
the rabbit, the crow, and the monkey, okay? So first we're gonna start with the iguana and we're going to figure out what do they look like? So let's come to the page and let's check out the iguana. I hope at home you're answering the things you notice about the way he looks. So Ms. G wrote, he's green, he has sticks in his ears, and he's short, right? Because he looks much smaller next to the snake. So next up is the python. What do you notice about the python? What color is it? What else do you notice? He's purple, he has no legs, and he's very long, right? Now let's see the rabbit. The rabbit is right on this corner. It's gray, it has big ears and big eyes. Some friends might not think this is gray, and that's true, it could be a little brown too, but we're just gonna stick with gray because that's a lot of the color on him. Next up, we have our crow at home. I want you to tell me what you notice about the crow. Ms. G put that he's black, he has wings, and he has a beak. For a monkey, what do you notice? He's brown, he has a long tail, and he has long arms. Okay, so now we know what all the characters look like in our story. Now we're going to figure out how do they move. Do the illustrations in a text move? How can we figure out how the animals are moving in the text? So my first question is, can pictures in a book move? They don't move, it's not a TV. You're right, so how do they show us that they're moving or tell us? Sometimes the illustration shows two pictures of the animal. We see how it moved from one place to another. Right, we discussed that in the last lesson. In the last lesson we saw there was two rabbits, but there actually weren't two rabbits, it was just moving from one place to another. We can listen to the words and maybe that tells us. Right, so they use different words in our story to show that they were moving. The iguana did not answer, but lumbered on, bobbing his head, badamin, badamin. So badamin, badamin are words, are uh, made up words, right? Are imaginary words that sound like the way a snake would move. But also there was a couple of other words, lumbered and bobbing. So just imagine a snake weaving and bobbing. And what other words can you use for a snake's movement? I hope at home you said, Bob's head, walk slow. Oh, I'm sorry, that was actually the iguana, friends. <laughs> the iguana was moving that way. He was bobbing his head, he was really slow, and he was moving badamin, badamin. He was going up and down, up and down. It sounds correct, right? Badamin, badamin. So he walks slow and he bobs his head. That's what the iguana does. Now we are going to look for the python. And the python, he began looking for somewhere to hide. The first likely place he found was a rabbit hole and went in, wasu, 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 wasu. So again, that sounds like a snake moving, right? Wasu, 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 wasu. In our story, they didn't use words for the way the snake moved. They kind of just used those imaginary words. At home, this is the question, how would you say a snake would move? He doesn't have legs or arms. He slides down the hole. He moves like an S. So we can tell that all from the pictures, right? No arms, he's sliding into the hole and it looks like a letter S. So we call that slithers. That's what you use for a snake that moves, slithers. Now let's continue on. When the rabbit saw the big snake coming into her burrow, she was terrified. She scurried out through her back way and bounded, crick, 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 across the clearing. So the crick, crick, crick is what the author used to show a rabbit moving. But what would you guys say as the way she moved? What words would you use? In our book, they use scurried, right? And bounded. She hops away. 
she moves away fast. So that gets in our uh, evidence organizer. How do they move? Runs out, hops away. Now we're going to check out the crow. A crow saw the rabbit running for her life. He flew into the forest crying, ka, ka, ka. The crow flies away. It said it in the words, right? He wants to tell people there is danger. So we have for how the crow moves, flies away and says, ka. Last up, we have our monkey. A monkey heard the crow. He was sure that some dangerous beast was prowling near. He began screeching and leaping through the trees and helped warn the other animals. The monkey was crashing through the treetops. So we heard all sorts of words of the way the monkey was moving. At home, I want you to think of an answer. And here, he screeches. He jumps far in the trees. He went to tell people there is danger. So these are all ways the monkey was moving. He was jumping on the branches. So if we look at our whole evidence organizer, we have the iguana. He's green, he, sticks, he has sticks in his ears and he's short. He walks slow and bobs his head. The python is purple, no legs, long, slithers and slides. The rabbit is gray with big ears and big eyes, runs out, hops away. The crow is black, wings, beak, flies away, says ka. Monkey is brown, long tail, long arms, and jumps on the branches. So at home, I want you answering what, who was, who was your favorite character? And I need you to give me a why too. Not just a who, but a why, friends. I hope you're answering at home. Miss G answers here. Let's see. My favorite character is, um, I'm going to say the iguana. Because he never made anything up. He just said, I don't want to hear you anymore. So I'm going to put sticks in my ears and walk away. And that's a way to solve things. If you don't want to hear something silly anymore and it's making you upset, you can just keep a quiet mouth and walk away. So the iguana for me is my favorite character. What's yours at home? I hope you're answering. I hope you answered before. Um, and I want you guys to have a wonderful week and a wonderful time. Enjoy the weather. Enjoy outside if you can. Uh, if not, enjoy your family at home and just be grateful and happy for everyone that's around you. Okay, guys. Bye.